Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. How does a Mediterranean cruise in the sun sound to you? All expenses paid. Not very sinister. Rather pleasant, eh? And that's what you think. For when this cruise is only half finished, I think you'll be ready to abandon ship and take the next plane home. We're on a cruise with Elvira Graham, one of the world's leading fashion designers. Her escort, Tony Butler, and her daughter, Marjorie. At the moment, our ship is docked in the Libyan coastal town of Derna. Elvira and Tony have gone sightseeing, trying to find a certain shop they heard about from the ship's captain. This is so deserted. There can't be any stores down here. Oh, it's not a very long alley. Let's look. Oh, there's a candle shop. Would that be it? Well, there doesn't seem to be anything else. Elvira, I don't like this. Let's get out of here. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's just too strange. We've gone almost the whole length of the alley, and there's nothing but that candle shop. And that's closed. Oh, Tony, wait. Look, look up ahead. The alley doesn't end. It makes a turn. Let's go back. Captain Miller said the store didn't really exist, and I believe him. We can at least look. Come on. <gasps> Tony, look. There it is. <laughs> Our mystery drama, The Devil's Boutique, was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by Bob Juran and stars Joan Loring and Robert L. Green. Elvira Graham found The Devil's Boutique, and that was her greatest mistake. She found it on a sunny afternoon in Derna on that Mediterranean cruise. And uh, what happened after that? Well, Tony Butler will have to tell us. A year has passed since that fateful afternoon. And at the moment, we're in the office of Lieutenant Morgan, 31st Precinct. Come in, Mr. Butler. Uh, sit down. Thanks. <coughs> Sergeant McKay says you can identify the body, the uh, lady of the earrings. Yes. Oh, good, uh... We'll go right down to the morgue and... Uh, I don't have to see her, Lieutenant. I know who it is. Well, a viewing is absolutely necessary, but uh, we can do it later. Uh, who is she? Elvira Graham. Was she a friend of yours, a relative? A friend. Elvira Graham. Uh, we put her age at about uh, 50. If you'd seen her in life, you'd have thought she was 30. But you were close. She was 52. I'd appreciate your giving us a statement, Mr. Butler. Uh... Tell us all you can about her. Cause of death was drowning, no marks on the body. Uh, we have it down as suicide, but uh, we still can't rule out murder. I'll make a statement, but would you do me a favor? Keep it out of the press. Well, it's already news, Mr. Butler. I know that. It was the item in the paper that brought me in here. Ordinarily, with an unidentified body floating in the river isn't that much news, but... Uh... A nude woman in earrings and fantastic lipstick. That's why I know without the shadow of a doubt it's Elvira Graham. And that's why I wish you could keep what I'm about to tell you out of the papers. Well, I'll uh, do what I can, Mr. Butler, but uh, <laughs> well, they don't have to know every detail. We'll have to release her identity, though. Yes, I see that. A lot of people are wondering what happened to Elvira Graham. And now they'll know. But the woman suffered enough. Yeah, she won't suffer anymore. No, I guess not. She was admired, hated, adored, despised, envied. You uh, say you're a friend. She has no relatives? Only a daughter. I'm here in her stead. The daughter's name? Marjorie. Marjorie Graham. Well, just relax and tell us all you can about Elvira Graham. I'll ask questions later. Elvira Graham was a fashion designer. At her peak, the best. And she had a knack of making sure that no one, but no one, ever looked better than Elvira Graham. It was almost a year ago, in June. She just had a showing of her fall line, and she, Marjorie and I, were starting off on a cruise to relax. I was her escort at the moment. Tell Amy, I'll bring her 
can't hear you, Elvira, dear. Just wave. Oh, bye. Bye. Marjorie, give me a streamer, quick. You've thrown them all, Mother. Oh. Oh, it doesn't matter. Come along. Let's go back and finish up that champagne. I think you've had enough, Mother. How many times do I have to tell you, Marjorie? I'll be the judge of that. Exhausted. Pour me one more, Tony. Thank heaven Marjorie's gone to her own cabin. She is so tiresome sometimes. Do you think I've had too much champagne, darling? Be honest. Well, you do want to look your best at the captain's table tonight. <laughs> sweet, sweet, Tony. You have such a knack. For what, I'm not sure yet. But a knack, you're absolutely right. You drink this. I'm going to take a nap. I think I'll go up on deck for a while. Tony. Hmm? Do you think that dress Charlotte Remsen was wearing made her look slimmer? Maybe a little taller? Definitely. You designed it that way. Yes. Made her look almost too attractive, I think. Well, I'm not going to think about work anymore. We're here to relax. Kiss me, Tony. And let Elvira get her beauty rest. Marjorie, I thought you were in your cabin. Oh, it's too exciting to stay down there. What's Mother doing? Napping. Of course, I needn't have asked. Marge, why do you stay so close to Elvira? Don't you want a life of your own? I could ask the same of you, couldn't I? Touche. Are you in love with my mother, Tony? Love? No. And you know, she's not in love with me. We are companions. I'm convenient. And vice versa. The great Elvira Graham. She picks her men the way she picks her wardrobe. But it's fun while it lasts. Escort to the great Elvira Graham. And all that press doesn't hurt my acting career. Well, at least you're honest, Tony. Probably the first who was. Thank you. But you didn't answer my question, and I've answered yours. Why do I stay so close? I admire her, too. But I love her. So many people are jealous of her, and I feel maybe I'm the one little sincere spot in her life. I don't always agree with her. And she wants you with her. I know that. I wondered about that. Why the glamorous Elvira Graham wants her 20-year-old daughter tagging along Ever stop to think she loves you? Yes, I think she does. And let's face it. You add to her image. Who would believe that anyone as young as Elvira could have a 20-year-old daughter? I've heard that before. Mother's always been vain. But lately, Tony, it's becoming more of an obsession. She's the acknowledged queen of fashion. What would you expect? She's putting it before everything else. She sold her soul to... Vanity. Such profundity from one so young. Don't laugh at me, Tony. I'm worried. I'm not laughing at you, Marge. But there's nothing we can do about Elvira's personality. We just live with it. Or... Or what? Or leave it. And for the moment, it suits me to live with it. Come on. Why don't you take a nap, too? You want to look your best? We're at the captain's table tonight. How could I forget it? Mother? Come in, dear. I just wondered if you were ready to go up for dinner. Tony and I have had a cocktail already. Yes, just about. But I see you're not, Marjorie. I, I am. That, that's why I came by. But, Marjorie, you're not going to wear that scarf with that dress. Well, yes, I am. Oh, no, 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 dear. The dress of chiffon, it looks fine, but you don't cover décolleté as low as that with a scarf. It's ridiculous. Besides, it's the wrong color. It should contrast, if anything. But I thought it was perfect. Perfect? Marjorie, I cannot understand how the daughter of Elvira Graham can be so insensitive to style. Doesn't anything rub off? Mother, this... We're dining at the captain's table. It may not mean anything to you, but it does to me. 
I disagree with you about the scarf, but I'll give in to your superior judgment. No, darling, you'll find it's always right. Now, hurry and replace that dreadful scarf with a string of plain, simple pearls and change your lipstick. It's too bright. I'll meet you in the dining room. You do understand. I just want you to look your best. Well, you must always look your best, my dear. But never better than mother. <laughs> I've never tasted such wine, Captain. A very special vintage. Saved for very special guests. Oh, you flatter me, sir. Uh, have some more margarine. Oh, no, thank you. I, I'm fine. Do, Marjorie. It's bound to improve your disposition. Uh, just a little there. Uh, Mr. Butler? Thanks. Uh, this isn't your first cruise, Mrs. Graham. <laughs> the first with such a charming captain. <laughs> <laughs> now, who's flattering? No, I was quite honored to be asked to your table, Captain. Oh, my pleasure, Mrs. Graham. I've been admiring those pearls, Miss Graham. Are they natural? Yes, and, and matched. Thank you for noticing, Captain. Stunning. Really? I always thought Marjorie's neck was too thick for pearls. Mother, a light scarf might have been more suitable, perhaps. I bow to your expertise, Mrs. Graham, but I do like the pearls. Thank you, Captain. As a matter of fact, I know a place you'd both be interested in. Have you ever heard of the Devil's Boutique? Devil's Boutique? No. Sounds fascinating. It's a little shop in Derna, on the Libyan coast. I've heard some of my passengers talk about it. If it's unusual, it's for Elvira. Apparently, it is unusual, all right. Actually, they tell me the shop itself has no name, and it's very difficult to find, even with directions. How curious. What do you mean? Well, I've had passengers tell me about the unusual things they've bought in this shop. Clothes, accessories, scented candles, everything. Oh, that sounds charming. But I've had others who claim they've never even been able to find it. <laughs> That's apparently why it's called the Devil's Boutique. Elvira will find it. <laughs> when will we be in Derna? In about nine days. Oh, well, there's lots of crews to enjoy before then. Yes, our first stop is Cadiz. Then we swing into the Mediterranean. Oh, well, here's to the Mediterranean. And the Devil's Boutique. The next few days were filled with sun, shuffleboard, and swimming. Elvira made sure everyone knew Elvira Graham was aboard. She spent a half hour deciding on just the right outfit for the time of day she'd make her appearance. Even the shade of her lipstick changed. One color for morning, another for cocktails. We stopped for a day at Cadiz and then slipped into the Mediterranean. There it is, on the horizon. Good. We'll dock in about two hours. How long will we be there, Captain? We'll leave with tonight's tide, about seven o'clock. Good. We'll have all afternoon for sightseeing. Uh, you'll excuse me, I have to get to the bridge. Certainly. I have such a strange excitement about this city, Tony. There's something about the name, Derna. And the challenge of finding that fascinating shop. And this was supposed to be a non-work vacation? <laughs> There's no such thing for me, and you know it. If I don't keep ahead of the pack, well, besides it's fun, we'll sightsee in Derna, and I won't leave until I find that devil's boutique. I can tell you one thing. You wouldn't catch me going near a place with a name like that. And I certainly wouldn't go out of my way to find it. But then, for a woman as vain and determined as Elvira Graham, it might be just the place. Vanity, like love, is blind. And Elvira has no inkling of the strange fate that awaits her in the Devil's Boutique. I'll return shortly. Most women are particular about their appearance, which everyone should be. But with some, it becomes an obsession. Elvira Graham was pushed by an ego that demanded to be first, pulled by a vanity 
that demanded most of her attention. And both were responsible for her downfall. Marjorie, why aren't you dressed? We're going ashore. I'm not going, Mother. I feel like staying on the ship. Well, do as you like. Tony and I are going into town and find that shop the captain told us about. You go ahead. I'll be all right. I just don't feel like going. This is exciting. I've never seen a place like this. I wish we knew where we were going. The captain said follow the main street to the water well and then take the first alley on the right. If it's that simple, how come some people couldn't find it? They didn't want to find it badly enough. Come along, Tony. Why don't we just stroll and enjoy the sights on the way? Time for that later. Here's the alley. First right after the well. You're going down there? Of course. This is so deserted. There can't be any stores down here. Oh, it's not a very long alley. Let's look. There's a candle shop. Would that be it? Well, it doesn't seem to be anything else. Elvira, I don't like this. Let's get out of here. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's just too strange. There's nothing but that candle shop, and that's closed. Well, maybe we could knock and ask. Somebody might be in the back. I, I think we'd better get out of here. Oh, I hate to just... Wait, Tony, look. Up ahead. The alley doesn't end. It makes a turn. Let's go back. Well, we can at least look. This is crazy. There wouldn't be a store hidden back there. Captain Miller said it was hard to find, and it's probably worth it. I can't imagine why. <gasps> Tony, look. There it is. There it was, just ahead of us. The windows of a quaint boutique, dimly lighted. And in the window, belts, dresses, slacks, scarves, accessories, beads. Elvira literally jumped with joy. Tony, we found it. And it's open. Come on. Oh, look at the things in this window. Tony. It is different. It's fabulous. I could design a whole suit around that. Let's go in. The captain was right. There's no name on it. There weren't on any of the shops in the main street, either. Here, it doesn't seem to matter. Ah, fabulous. Just fabulous. Doesn't seem to be anyone around. I just want to browse anyway. Look at this jacket. There's not a seam in it. How do you suppose... Madame likes the jacket. Oh, yes. <laughs> it is stunning. One of my favorite creations. You're certainly original. I've never seen styles even resembling these before. I know I'm not copied. Everything here is quite original. Mrs. Graham is a designer herself. She knows how to judge quality. I guess it very Graham. I am honored. You know me. Anyone remotely concerned with fashion knows Elvira Graham. Oh. Is that not so? Well, yes, but I never thought here... You I... didn't think that in such a humbled out-of-the-way shop, one would have heard of you? <laughs> well, frankly, no. I keep up with things, huh? And you are... My name is Arch. You don't mind if I look around? <laughs> that is what my shop is here for, Mrs. Graham. Uh. If I can be of service, just call me. I will be in the back. Mm. Oh, I stumbled onto a gold mine. What do you mean? Why, these styles. The man is a genius. But how many people know about him? No one who matters. So? None of this stuff has hit the market yet, and I'm going to introduce it. You can't take it all back with you, dear. Ah, uh, yes, I can. In my sketchbook. Tony, darling, you're looking at Elvira Graham's newest collection. You're going to pass the stuff off as your own? Of course. We're going to know the difference. Uh, you have found something to oh, your liking? <laughs> everything. It's impossible to choose. I'd like to bring my daughter back to see your place. Uh, I would be honored. We're sailing on the Lady Madison. I'm going back to the ship and get her. You'll be open all afternoon? Certainly. Come, Tony. 
I can't wait to see Marjorie's reaction to this place. Why all the fuss about Marjorie? I want Marjorie to come back with us so the two of you can distract him while I copy. You think he's not going to notice you in your sketchbook? Not if you and Marjorie help. She'll know how to keep him busy. Mother, this is unbelievable. I told you it was sensational. I just wish there were other customers around. Now, you you know what to do, Marjorie. Yes. I don't really approve. But I'll do it. What'll I do? You stay with me, Tony. You can cover me. Ah, ah uh, Mrs. Graham, you did return. Yes. Uh, this is my daughter, Marjorie. I am charmed, Miss Graham. How do you do? This is Mr. Arch, the fabulous designer. Marjorie's interested in a pantsuit. Uh, she wants to try on a few things. Tony and I'll just browse. As you wish. This way, Miss Graham. I have a few styles here I think might interest you. Well, just stand close, Tony. We'll pretend we're looking closely at these things, and I'll, I'll get my sketches. Well, Marjorie, did you find something you liked? I'm taking this blouse. I decided against a suit. Oh, it's very attractive. Well, we must be on our way. We're sailing this evening. Mrs. Graham? Uh-huh. Did you get all the sketches you need? I... Well, I... <laughs> I, I did jot down an idea or two. I hope you don't mind. I mean, imitation is the highest form of flattery or whatever. Is that exactly ethical? Oh, Mother. Oh, well, perhaps not, Mr. Arch. I shall tear them up if you feel that way. No, 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 no. I didn't say I mind it. Oh, perhaps we should leave. Tony, Marjorie... One moment, Mrs. Graham. Yes? Please, no hard feelings. I should not have mentioned the subject. After all, I am flattered by your very presence. The great Edvira Graham in my humble shop, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Would you accept the token of admiration? I... I, well, I don't quite understand. Have you ever seen anything as exquisite <gasps> as this? Mother, how beautiful. Wow. Oh, they... They are expensive earrings, but surely you're not suggesting you that You would I... honor me by accepting them. This is most extraordinary and generous, Mr. Arch, but I, I don't see how I could possibly... Ah, you do me a disservice, Mrs. Graham. I, I insist. Go ahead, Elvira. It's an unusual gesture. Well, <laughs> thank you. I wrapped them for you. I be right back. You ought to accept a kindness with a little more grace, Elvira. But he took me so by surprise. I mean, right on the heels of accusing me of spying. He didn't exactly accuse, Mother. Well, I don't embarrass easily, but that was one of the times. Here he comes. Well, here you are, Mrs. Graham. There is no one on whom they will look better. <laughs> Good day, Mrs. Graham. And bon voyage. It was late afternoon when we got back to the ship. Marjorie went to her stateroom to dress for dinner. And Elvira stored her sketches in a secret compartment of her trunk. I'm not taking any chances with those, Tony. They are priceless. Speaking of priceless, let's see the earrings. Oh, yes. Here they are, in my purse. I've, I'm so taken up with the sketches, I'd almost forgotten them. I see. I still don't understand his generosity. Oh, but they are beautiful. Well, what's this? Anything wrong? Well, packed with the earrings. It's a lipstick. So? Well, nothing, really. He just didn't mention it. Let's see the earrings. They are extraordinary, aren't they? They seem even more brilliant than they did in the shop. Why don't you wear them at dinner tonight? I intend to. Curious about the lipstick, though. I wonder why he didn't mention it. Almost ready, Elvira. It's eight o'clock. We'll be out in a minute. Is Marjorie there yet? She just arrived. I won't be long. She wants us to get the full effect all at once. The earrings. She's wearing them at dinner tonight. And the lipstick. The lipstick? The shopkeeper at that boutique slipped in a lipstick with the earrings. 
It seems to match the color of the stones. Well? Elvira. Oh, Mother. They're breathtaking. They are striking, Elvira. The lipstick is perfect, isn't it? It lights up your whole face. It's almost uncanny. I've, I've never seen you quite so radiant, darling. Watch out, you two. You'll turn my head. That has been done by experts. Oh, you're dreadful, Tony. Go on. Let's go to dinner. You're turning heads, darling. Everyone's looking at you. Oh? I hadn't noticed. Oh, Mrs. <laughs> Graham. Good evening. Miss Graham, Mr. Butler. How did you enjoy dinner? Captain Miller, I owe you a million thanks. I found that boutique. And you liked it? It is fabulous. It's going to do great things for me. Do you like my earrings, Captain? Magnificent. <laughs> I got them at the boutique. Most unusual. The man at the shop gave them to Mother. They're most becoming, Mrs. Graham. Uh, shall we sit down? The steward's ready with a consomme. Oh, yes, dinner. Of course. Oh. Tony, it's been the gayest night since we left New York. I think I danced with every man in the room. Almost. Almost? Everyone but me. Oh, but... Well, you hate dancing. You could have sat one out. Uh, be a dear and unzip me. I want to get comfortable and have a last champagne. Here, alone with you. <laughs> Tony, darling. Dang. Help me with the searing, Tony. I can't get it off. Let's see. Just clips on. It ought to open up. Hmm. It... it won't open. Well, try the other one. I... I can't budge this one either. Well, this is ridiculous. It's just a little spring. Pull harder. Ow! Sorry, darling. Well, never mind. I, I'll get them off in the morning. I'm too tired to care. I'm going to bed. Don't wake me tomorrow, Tony. I feel as though I could sleep for a week. <laughs> Good morning, darling. It's morning already. Oh, I must look a sight. Hand me that cold cream, dear. Here you are. Oh, I must have been tired last night to leave this lipstick on. You were quite the belle of the ball, you know. <laughs> you don't mind. The price I pay for escorting the Elvira Graham. Oh. What's the matter? Help me, my lips. The lipstick isn't coming off. What? I can't seem to remove this lipstick. I mean, cold cream always takes it right off. Rub harder. But it just doesn't seem to work. The earrings. Now the lipstick. The earrings. Last night, we couldn't get the earrings off. Oh, I remember now. They're still on. Yes. I... I... Can't open the clasp. I didn't have any luck with them last night either. Try again, Tony. Try Okay. It's it's crazy. It's just a little spring, but uh, I I can't open it. Oh, you've got to, Tony. I've got to get these off. I told you I wouldn't go near a place with a name like the Devil's Boutique. You never know what you're in for. The earrings and lipstick the little shopkeeper gave Elvira were beautiful, all right. And she was immediately attached to them, wouldn't you say? We'll see what happens next when I return shortly with Act Three. Let's return now to the stateroom where Elvira Graham can't seem to remove her lipstick or her earrings. Two items she was given by the proprietor of that quaint little shop in Derna. Uh, you know, uh, the one with that odd name. I've got to get them off, Tony. I can't can't be seen in the morning wearing these. Don't get off about It's just not done. Relax, Elvira. We'll get them oh. off. Just sit still while I... Oh, there's no use trying that again. Maybe you could get some kind of tool, something to pry them loose. Where? Well, ask the captain. Oh, no, wait, don't. Oh, he'd think it's odd. Uh... No different from what I'm thinking. Oh. Mother, Tony, going up for breakfast? Uh, Mother, you're still wearing the earrings. Yes. Well, do you think they're quite the thing for morning? Well, of course not. But I'm having a little trouble getting them off. Want me to try? 
Oh, you might as well. Tony and I haven't had any luck. Tony, maybe we ought to try and get a tool. Don't ask the captain. Try the purser or someone. Oh, I've never seen a glass. Oh, tight. That's not the half of it. What do you mean? I can't get the lipstick off either. We tried everything. Cold cream and even alcohol on the lipstick. Wire cutters we got from the engine room on the earrings. But nothing would take away the color from Elvira's lips or those dazzling earrings from her ears. The metal clasps seemed impervious to the shears. Evening finally came, and Elvira decided she could put in an appearance for dinner. The lipstick and the earrings were appropriate after six. Relax, darling. You're still the center of all eyes. Oh, Oh, Mrs. Graham. You're wearing those becoming earrings from the shop in Derna. They're (laughs) quite extraordinary. They are indeed. We're having a piano recital tonight after dinner. I hope you're all planning to join us. We wouldn't miss it. In the lounge at nine. We never made the recital. On the way from the dining room, something happened that set Elvira off. Father, what is it? Stupid little trap. Calm down, Elvira. Didn't either of you hear that woman as we were leaving dinner? No, you didn't. You didn't hear her say how gauche those earrings are getting. To you? No, to her whole table. I wish I'd slapped her face. Well, I can't leave the stateroom again, not until I find some way of getting these hateful things off. Maybe the man in the shop who gave them to you can help. Go all the way back to Derna. There's got to be an easier way. Well, you haven't come up with it. Maybe Marjorie has an idea. I'm going back to Derna. We'll fly from the next port at which we stop. Elvira, be reasonable. We well, can't. reasonable? There's no reason to this whole mad thing. Marjorie, you go on with the cruise. Tony and I will go back to Derna and then meet you in New York. Oh, no, I'm staying with you. Oh, do as you like. I'm too upset to argue. Tony, see the purser or the captain or someone and see what arrangements we can make. There. There's the window. And I remember that carpet shop across the square. The alley should be just ahead. I hope he can help after what it took to get back here. Oh. We've been on everything but a camel. That's the alley we went down, isn't it? Oh, yes. Come on. This is it. Ah, uh, there's that candle shop. Still closed. Doesn't look as though it's ever been opened. Tony? Yes, I see. That's strange. The alley ends in a wall. But it... It turned off to the left the last time we were here. That's where the shop was. An absolutely dead end. How could they have put up a wall? We were here only three days ago. This isn't a new wall, Elvira. Look at it. What? It's hundreds of years old. But this is the alley. We came down and it branched off and we found the shop. I wasn't dreaming. You were both with me. Tell me this is frightening. Well, there's another way in, another alley. I've got to find that shop. I've got to find it. Come on, Marjorie, be quick. Which way did she go? I don't know. Oh, she's disappeared in the crowd. Stay close to me. The street's so crowded, we can't go fast enough. Oh, Tony, what are we going to do? We pushed through the crowded streets, and finally, after more than half an hour, we found Elvira. Mother! Marjorie! Oh, thank heavens. I didn't know where to look for you. Elvira, get a hold of yourself. I've asked everyone I could find who spoke any English at all. No one, absolutely no one, ever heard of the shop. The only thing left to do was to go back to New York. We returned home, and Elvira went into hiding. Of course, everyone assumed we were still on the cruise, so no one called. But Elvira was getting more desperate. A plastic surgeon's my only hope. A friend of mine had some work done about a year ago. I could find out the name of his man. Oh, do it, Tony. Do it today. Now, oh, Mrs. Graham, Mr. Butler, come in. Thank you, Doctor. You're a friend of Charlie Poole's? Yes, we've done some shows together. Well, now, uh, how can I help you, Mrs. Graham? This lipstick I'm wearing. Yes? I can't get it off. Nothing works, so don't ask me how many things I've tried. I, I wouldn't be here if anything had helped. Oh, well, let me see. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I'm just going to scrape your lower lip a little. It, it won't hurt. <clears throat> yes, the color's embedded in the lip tissue. Seems to be a dye. Is there anything you can do? 
Well, I could try bleach. It would be uncomfortable for a week or so, but probably effective. Do it. I'll do anything to get out of this clown makeup, but that's only part of my problem. There's more. Uh, take my bandana, Tony. Those earrings, Doctor. They won't come off either. They're clasped completely around my earlobe. How long have you had this uh, uh, condition? It's been almost a month. I got the earrings and lipstick in a little shop in Libya, and frankly, they are bewitched. I know that now. Uh... Hold still a moment. Yes, the lobes are beginning to swell. And we'll have to work on this. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Graham. I'm, I'm at a loss to know what to do with these. Oh, have you tried... The... A machine shop, an auto garage, everything but an acetylene torch. I must admit I've never seen anything like it. No one has. Well, Doctor. Well, I... I shall give you the bleach for your lips, apply it twice a day, and then I'll see you again in a week. Well, and the earrings. You'll have to give them some very serious thought, Mrs. Graham. There seems to be nothing I can do, short of removing your earlobes. Mother, mother, please answer me. Leave me alone, Marjorie. What's the matter, Marjorie? Oh, Tony, thank God you're here. Mother won't come out of her room. She locked herself in hours ago. There's no harm in that. She's going through hell. But I want to help her. You can't help her. All we can do is to be here if she wants us. If she wants to be alone, let her. That bleach isn't helping her lips. It just makes it harder for her to talk. They're as bright as ever. This morning she came out for breakfast. Tony, I nearly fainted. I know. She's not a pretty sight. Her face is so white and lined... Those colors just scream at you. I thought I heard you, Tony. Where have you been? Down at the docks. The ship came in this morning. I went to claim our trunks. Oh, of course. The luggage we left on board when we flew back. I never... I've never given it a thought. Was everything there? Everything. And everyone. Everyone? A welcome home party. Oh, no. About 20. Oh. They assumed we were still on the cruise. Oh, Lord, Tony. What did you tell them? That you and Marjorie stayed on in Nice. Oh, that's good. Good thinking, Tony. No one will be calling up here. Oh, here are the trunks. Just put them anywhere for now. There's the one I'm interested in. Here you are. And this is for you. Oh, yes, I'd almost forgotten. What are you doing, Mother? My sketches. I may be in hibernation, but Elvira Graham isn't through yet. I'll fix that demon. Oh, yes, here they are. <gasps> what is it, Elvira? Oh. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Mother? What the... No wonder. <gasps> Tony... They're blank. Absolutely blank. Elvira, please. Mother. You saw them. Blank. Every last page blank. He's cursed me. Elvira, come sit down. Why? What did I do to be cursed like this? Elvira, time can... No, no, no. Don't feed me any more of your stupid encouragement. What's the matter with you? Look at me. Clown. Freak. Tony, I can't stand this. I, I've got to leave. Stay, dear little daughter. Elvira. Dear, pretty light of my life. Your beauty won't change your freshness. But just look at your glamorous mother. Look, damn you. I've been damned. For what? Why? Is the answer to that in heaven? In hell? Ah, yes, hell. Where that demon came from. That demon who gave me this beauty. The devil himself in his quaint little boutique. The devil's boutique be damned. The devil himself be damned along with me. What did I do? Did I worship beauty too much? 
Elvira never spoke another word after that. She returned to her room, stayed there, night and day, and three days later she was gone. Gone? She'd vanished. You tried to find her? Oh, yes. We hired a private detective. We didn't want it in the papers or in the police files. After about six months, we gave up. Where do you suppose she's been all this time? Wandering, hiding. I don't know. Well, uh, will you look at her body now? If you insist. I must. Well, that was quite a story, Mr. Butler. You a writer? You don't believe it? I don't know whether I do or not. It's too fantastic to be true. Then again, it's too fantastic to be made up. Well, here we are. Oh, well, there she... Oh, no. What the devil? The earrings are gone. And the lipstick. Now, do you believe me? Elvira, you were beautiful, determined, and the world's best designer. <laughs> you were on your way to becoming the greatest. But be reasonable, Elvira, and look at it this way. There wasn't room for the two of us. There's nothing wrong in being beautiful to other people. It's when we start becoming beautiful to ourselves that we're in for trouble. Elvira's life wasn't a total loss. Considering her personality, she ended up in pretty good company. I'll be back shortly. I hope you won't think unkindly about the fashion world because of our play. Those worthy institutions strive to keep us looking our best and do a wonderful job of it. Where would we be without them? In jail for indecent exposure, no doubt. But I would like to leave you with a friendly suggestion. The next time you buy a lipstick, jewelry, a garment, be sure there's a label on it. Be safe. Know your designer. Our cast included Joan Loring, Robert L. Green, Jada Rowland, Bob Caliban, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.